Greetings, Judy here and today I'll be attempting to make a tutorial for Crusader Kings 2, my first tutorial on this channel. But the first thing we have to do is go to our installation folder. By default it's your disk C, program files 86. Steam, Steam Apps, Come On, and Crusader Kings 2. Find the file CK2 Game Executable. Right click, go to Properties, Compatibility, and check the option Disable the optimization of full screen or something like this. Don't forget to hit apply and OK. Now we can properly run our game. It's of course because Windows 10 is fucked up. Play. And as you can see, it works. Okay, the first thing we should do is adjust our settings to our liking. We can adjust our autosave interval, half a year or yearly or completely disable it. Enable autosave to cloud or disable Wikipedia links. Some characters in the game have their own Wikipedia link, which will redirect you to the external site. Video, audio, and controls. Not really much to set up here. Apply. And as you can see, I have enabled only two DLCs, Sharmag and the Old Gods. That's because these two DLCs are the only necessary two DLCs. Of course, it depends on your playstyle. If you want, for example, play as China, you should go for Jade Dragon, etc. But uh, the more DLCs you have, the more game breaking effect it would have. Let's go to single player, new game, and I will go to the first age, 769 AD, and do custom game setup. This will let me to choose pretty any country known by this age. On the left side, we can see and adjust our age, the age we want to play in. As you can see, you need those two DLCs for the first two ages. I will choose Bohemia. On the right side you can see our chart dress window, our country, something about us, our difficulty and our vassals. 
The interesting thing about this game is that you don't have to play as the highest man of the country. But you also can choose the vassal or the lower lords. But I'll be playing as High Chief of Bohemia for this tutorial play. And here are game rules or the game settings. First is Iron Man mode. This will enable you to gain achievements if enabled. But uh, you will also have only one save and you cannot leave the game without saving. You can choose if you want to change only diplomacy rules or warfare, but I want everything. The first here is Mongol invasion. That is of course the appearance of the Mongol horde. It can be historical, random, delayed random or off. As you can see, red setting will disable your achievements. So to gain achievements you need Iron Man mode activated and all settings set to blue. Generate families. This is basically kind of protection of the real historical families. So they have lower chance to die off before they really historically died off. Exclave independence. Exclave is the land not connected to your mainland. So, for example, if you play as someone with capital in London, London is your capital, country and city, and you conquer Iceland, Iceland is your exclave. It is not connected by land to your capital. And here you can adjust what you need for exclave. If it's off, exclave can be pretty anywhere. For increased difficulty you can adjust it and for example For example, here you need a naval part, or it must be part of your charter's de jure territory. Secret religious cults, well, those are secret religious cults, so I don't really know what to say about it. They are just more fanatical than anyone else. Turkey Conquerors, same as the Mongol invasion, but from Turkey. Shattered Retreat, this defines the action your army will commit if they are defeated. If it's on, they will run away and retreat until their morale is restored. And if it's off, 
They will just go to the neighboring tile, to the neighboring country. I don't understand why this makes the game easier. Because the army which just defeated you can go only one tile to finish you. So I'll leave it on. Army movement lock. That means that if your army is halfway in some territory or in some country, they cannot be moved back. They will finish the movement. It started to really piss me off, so I turned it off. With army movement lock off, you can move them pretty anytime, even though there are three quarters in the territory you set them. Siege assaults, those are kind of special events when your army is in enemy territory and you are besieging them their city or castle or temple, anything. You can storm them by hitting the assault button. And your armies will charge towards the defenders. And for the price of increased casualties, you will gain this uh, castle or city faster. If it's on, of course. You can also set it unlimited and off. On. You can storm only forts level 6 and lower. Levels of the fort are gained by building better walls and things like this. Siege events. Those are some things happening on both sides, attackers and defenders. It can be either good for attackers or good for defenders. For example, some illness spreads in the town and kills many defenders. Or the defenders manage to sneak in the attacker's camp and kill many attackers. Defensive packs are kind of alliances which will trigger by threat level. If your threat level is higher than 5, anyone can create a defensive pact against you. Threat is generated by conquering lands. So, if you, for example, conquer Poland, your threat will rise to, I don't know, for example, 15%. And from 5%, anyone can create defensive pact against you. Meaning, anyone can join the defensive pact. And if you attack anyone in the pact, Every country in the pact will be at war with you. So it's not really wise to do so. But of course you can create or join the pact too. 
naturally not to defect against yourself. Gender equality was the default. What the fuck? I want historical. Those are gender laws. Like the rights of women and if the women can be king, etc. Supernatural events. Those are some events of spawning a demon child or immortal person, etc. Absurd events? I'm not really sure what is absurd event here. Because I have it on all the time. And I am not able to distinguish what is absurd and what is not. If it's like when your king falls on the castle walls. Or something like this. Or something else. I'm not really sure. Dynamic de jure drift. Means. Your de jure can go to anyone. De jure. Is kind of like. Your claim. You have the jure and the jure claim. The jure means the country is yours and you control it. So you have the jure. But if you have claim, it means the country is not yours, but you are eligible to take it in any way. You can declare war to gain your de jure claim. Or by marriage. Or of course if everyone else with the jur dies, it's yours. And we can restrict it or turn it off. This means you can have the jur only with the countries that are on border with you and disabled. We'll leave it to default. The jur assimilation duration. That means how long will it take to de jure, meaning the country or the realm, sub-realm, to assimilate to your kingdom or to your country as a wall. And while it assimilates, the country you have taken it from will not have that the jur claim, so it cannot declare a war on you to reclaim it. It's no longer theirs, it's yours. The jur requirement. Oh, yeah, the jur land will be kept regardless of the circumstances. Uh -huh. So, if you have no de jure, the de jure land will eventually be destroyed. So, if you have country of Silesia, but no one has de jure of Silesia, Silesia will be destroyed.
but the land will just stay in your hands. Culture conversion, that's kind of the same as assimilation, but how long will it take to foreign culture in your kingdom or the tile the country you defeated to convert to your culture. For example, you defeat some Germans and they will be assimilating to Bohemians if you play Bohemians. Religious conversion speed is the same as culture but with religion. Raiding Raiding is a special ability of some cultures, especially Germanic, so Vikings. If you turn it off, it will prevent Viking raids. Raiding basically means that some party of armed guys go to another country and drop their gold without really declaring war. Of course, the raided country can defend itself, but without declaring an open war with the country that is raiding it. Adventurous? I don't understand why turning off disables achievements, but okay. Adventurers are just some random guys who take up weapons and their armies to claim your throne. Interfect marriages. Restricted means no women of some religion can marry a man of another religion. If you're Christian, you cannot marry Islamic women, for example. Don't get confused because the ruler always has to accept or agree. with marriage proposition. So it will never be done. Matrilinear marriages it means that the dynasty will continue with mother. The child will be born to mother's dynasty, not the father's. Naturally, no average person would ever accept something like this. Only the lower tiers. There are some adjustments for Sholomak, custom realms. I immediately turned it off because I thought it would be very non-historical. But later in the game I realized I need it. Because you have to level up your country. For example, I have High Chiefdom and I need Kingdom. And you can't really do it because you need to do something special. Like unite the land, 
that's somehow okay. It's possible. But after that, you need to create an empire. And that's the problem. Because if you defeat another kingdom, you will have two kingdoms under one king, which is impossible. So, in the time your king dies, your kingdom will fall apart and eventually lose the kingdom you just defeated and assimilated. So, you need this action. Charma, story events. That's something about Charlemag and Carloman. The Iron Century story events. Vassal Republics. I want it restricted because I don't want any republics. Sadly, there is no turning off the republics because they are completely useless. But it basically means how many republics can be in your kingdom amongst your vassals. Also, same goes for the theocracies. Republics are mostly based on trade, so they are very weak. Theocracies are the countries where the head of the country is someone from religion, like Pope, etc. Invitation to court? Default means invitation to your court will be accepted only if the invited person has some interests in your court, meaning it must be your son or someone related to you. You cannot just invite someone random, he won't accept it. But you also can turn it off. Diplomatic range means in which range can your characters interact. Provincial rebels. Those are basically some rebellions in your provinces. The old gods, provincial revolt strength. That's adjustment of the revolts. How powerful will they be? Defensive attrition. That's a kind of bonus for pagan religions because the invaders will have more attrition. Meaning they will run out of supplies faster and they will start dying. Pagan reformation must be allowed, surely, because if you play pagan, you need this reformation for more advancement. It basically means uh, 
that if you control some holy sites, you can reform your religion. And it will help not only you, but everyone from your religion. Because it will allow you to advance in the game and become feudal. Regencies, I don't understand how this can be turned off. But it means you will get regent. Regent is someone who is taking up your job if you are unable to do it yourself. If you are underage or injured. Assassination setting. Plots only means you need to start a plot against someone and invite other people to it so you can kill someone. And direct action would probably mean that you can just hire an assassin. Release prisoners after punishment, I don't understand why. Turning off turns off the achievements again. It means that if you commit a punishment on someone, you torture him, but I guess you need DLC the Grim Reaper or something like this for even an ability to punish someone. And if you punish him, you have to release him. Titles named after dynasties. Well, basically what it says. Cultures names. Cultures name their titles after the ruling dynasty. Abbasids, Bavandids, etc. Cultural title names the same, but for the countries, not for the dynasties. And then here is some setting for the multiplayer. Multiplayer assassination. I recommend it. No player relatives. Because if you want to play and make an alliance with some other player, having it free well, pretty fuck up everything because both cards usually want to kill each other. And you're not the only one who can make a plot. Pretty anyone can start a plot. Multiplayer animations. Innovation means that you ask your head of the church for innovation against someone unfaithful or pagan. And you can basically take all his land, his whole kingdom or country. Multiplayer third party claims. Oh yeah, that's about the pressing the claims. So 
if one player has a claim on territory of another player, he can push the claim by declaring the war and eventually winning the country. Or the tile he has claim on. The main size, that's the complete size of your land. How many countries you have, how many cities, how many temples, how many castles, etc. Vassal limit, how many vassals can you have under yourself? It doesn't mean the complete number of the vassals in your kingdom, only your direct vassals. If you turn it unlimited, I think it will disable some interactions with the vassals. Or no. No, sorry, that's with the current. Grant independence. Granting independence means you give independence to some country you own. Crusader states. Why not? Crusader states are states created after a successful crusade. Non-aggression pact faction block. That means if someone is plotting against you and creating a faction against you, for example, a uh, faction for freedom, for independence, and makes a non aggression pact with you. If you are the king, then the faction goes off, it just falls apart because. Their leader cannot have a non aggression pact with you. It's someone who is target of the faction. Blood splatter, that's the blood on your character's window. Hellenic Revival is the special event of. Uh, Restoring the ancient religion in Greece. Great works. Those are special buildings like uh, Mega Fortress or Grand Library. And historical great works like the Lighthouse of Alexandria, for example. And court size limit. How big can be your court? If we turn it off, it also turns off all events with the court. Okay, everything's set up and and we can also save our rules. So we won't need to set everything again in a new game. We simply go to save rules and choose a slot. And while starting a new game, we will go to load rules and slot. We can start finally.
Ok, ok. First things we have to do. I think I will start with explaining the interface. On the right side, you can see all kinds of your currencies. Wild, basically your money, your prestige. That's important, especially for our tribe. Piety, the main size. As I said, castles, cities, and temples. Vassal limit. How many vassals do we have directly under our ruler? And what is the maximum? Our realm size and our score. Score will go from the prestige and piety. Here are our messages. High and low priority. You can also see your personal cities or domain. Here is a time. You can see it's paused. And down here, there's map. And you can choose if you want to see realms, terrain, rebel risk, and pretty anything. And down here are chronicles, some important stories. Main menu, of course. Ledger, here are your statistics. Go to home province. Find a tile. Pretty good feature where you can just type in the title or region and find it. And same goes for characters. Uh, I don't want hits, I disable them. And zoom in and zoom out. Here on the left side, we have the window of our character. Here we can see pretty everything about our character. His traits, his modifiers, those are not permanent things. His titles, his claims, and his personal diplomacy. Here is our dynasty, our family tree and our realm tree. Our culture, we are bohemian, our religion and our state form. Currently we are tribal and we can go for feudal. Treasury, ball lines, and great works. We have none of it yet. Here you can click if you want to forbid your main character or any other character from joining the army and leading the army. So your character can't die in battle. If it's red. 
Here we can see his wife, crowned with none. This means it's you, this star, and our hair. Here we can choose our ambition. For example, get married and we will get 10 piety. Okay. And our personal statistics. Domain, vassals, how many soldiers do we have? Wealth, prestige, piety. As you can see, the same numbers are here because it's us. And here are our skills. Diplomacy, martial, stewardship, intrigues, learning, and our personal combat skill. Every skill defines your character and allows you to use more and more decisions. For example, if you have higher diplomacy, you are better in conversations. Down here is our family, our relations, vassals, our court, facts we currently have, and abroad. Because we are tribal, we have facts with our vassals. And also our age, our name, and our Wikipedia link. Ooh, okay. Some intel. Here is our council. There are people working directly for us. Here is our chancellor. He can improve diplomatic relations, fabricate claims, which is most important for me. We can send him somewhere to gain claim for us. He will start shouting that the land is rightfully ours for some reason. So the send. He can also send foreign vessels against each other. Our marshal, he can suppress revolts, decrease their chance, train troops, or organize raid, because we are tribal and we are bohemian. We can do raids. As a feudal, you cannot raid. That's technically the party of soldiers that will go to another country and rob their gold, if there are enough in numbers. We will train our steward, he can settle our tribe, no need anywhere. It's the changing of culture. Oversea construction. That's uh, the time modifier for any construction we're currently on. And build a legend. This thing will arise. A group of soldiers fanatical to our name. Why not? 
our spy master. He can scheme. Basically, everything spy does. Revealing plot against us. And discouraging our vassals from joining factions against us. Building spy network. Uncovering corruption. And study technology. That's the most important thing. As you can see in the window of country, it's Prague. We have our tribe here. No building, no castle, no city, just tribe. Here is our kingdom, Bohemia, Bohemia chiefdom, culture Bohemian, religion Slavic, supply and travel risk. This means how many wealth can someone rob until he gets to the fortification. And this is the level of our advancement. Everything is zero. There are some modifiers and raise local each levies. Those are our armies, our personal soldiers. Fleet and construct a great work. We don't have money for this. While I am here, I can build our first market village. Because we need money. Here you can see things like tax, port level, levies, or garrison size. Garrison are the current defenders of the city. Levi's are those you raise and move with on the map. And also specifics. Light infantry, archers, heavy infantry. As you can see, you need prestige for pretty everything when you are tribal. And here we can build a temple. Tribal not, because we already have one tribe. But back to council. We are going to throw our spy master somewhere. With a higher level of advances. 197. Military 1, economy 9, culture 7. That's pretty good, but there is someone better here. You should also make sure if your spy master isn't someone of your family if you're sending him to study technology. Because it uh, actually means steal technology. So if he's discovered, they will probably log him in jail. Diviner is our religious fanatic. 
You can proselytize, turning anyone to our religion, improve religious relations, and build zeal. That's uh, basically the same thing as a legend. But it will raise a small army dedicated to our religion. Why not? Try it. And you also should make sure Everyone has the highest level of his skill available by clicking on a point and choosing the right skill. We have 13 here, no one has a higher. We have 12, no one has higher. 11. Also, no one, nine, no one, and twelve, no one. This number means how much the person likes or dislikes you. It can go up to 100 and minus 100. There are also minor titles like Regent. If you don't have designed Regent, someone random will come up. Cup Bearer. This guy will taste your food if it's poisoned or not. Champions, some masters of everything possible and commanders of your armies laws here you are setting your laws like inheritance law meaning if your family inherits or Anyone can inherit or it must be chosen by the court. It's our, yeah, it's our son. And here we can nominate our successor. Of course, we will nominate our oldest son. We can also view other electors. Laws of the realm. Centralization means how many domains can we personally have? And the more, the less vessels we can have. And tribal organization is something which unlocks more and more options for us, for our advancement. Of course, with a higher organization, your tribal vassals will hate you more and more. But you eventually need max tribal organization to go to feudal. Obligations. Levi's means how many soldiers anyone must give you.
and taxation means how much wealth are they giving you like taxes feudal lords cities church and with higher organizations we can have even those tribal vassals technology here are our technologies military economic and culture we have none and everything increases something else most economic advances open the way for more improved buildings and culture increases your opinion or your piety and prestige gain also legalism unlocks better centralization and Levi's and taxation military there's our army revenues how much are we paying for them Here we can see how many soldiers are raised, which means on the map, this means raised. How many unraised and maximum total. We can raise all our Levi's by this or dismiss all Levi's by this. And our Levi's from Vassals. Because we are a tribal organization, no one is obliged to give us soldiers. We can only ask them for their support. And also hired. And there are statistics of our vassals. How many troops do they have? If you are feudal, your vassals are obliged to give you soldiers. And you can also directly control their troops. Here are some mercenaries we can hire. Advantage of the mercenaries is that you can have uh, mercenaries on the border when you want to fight with someone. If you want to declare a war your levies cannot be raised, so you cannot prepare your army on the border. But you can have mercenaries there. And holy orders. I'm pretty upset from the fact that there are no holy orders of different religions than Christianity, I think. I'm not sure if uh, Islam has something. And our fleets, of course.
our intrigues. There are some special things we can decide, like Adept Feudalism or Founder Kingdom or invite someone to our court. Down here are my plots. That means uh, who are we currently planning to kill? And who is Becker? Beckers are people committed to the plot. They are helping you with the plot and plot power. The chance that the plot will work. Known plots are just the plots you know about. If you don't have Spymaster, you cannot know about any plot happening. Your prisoners, here you can execute them. And threats. There can be, for example, a faction which is uh, gaining on strength. Factions. Here are factions like for independence, for lowering the tribal organization, etc. etc. And by the time they are gaining strength, with increasing number of faction members, you should be bear the strong factions. The strength of the factions is usually measured by number of their levies, of their soldiers. If it's closing, to number of your soldiers, you should be worried. Our religion, currently we are unreformed, which means uh, we do not have a head of our religion. We can reform it by taking at least three of the holy sites. We need reformed religion to adopt feudalism. And here you can see if the holy sites are a part of your religion, if your religion controls it or not. And your shamans. And here are secret societies. Whew. Okay. The explanation is done somehow. And we can start playing. As you saw, I've started building a market village which we need for more money, more wealth. And the first thing we should definitely do is, as the game says, marry our ruler, arrange marriage. We can choose pretty anyone here according to opinion, rank, name, dynasty, culture, realm, age, or specific skills, or even a religion. We want someone of our religion, of course. Let's see. 
Uh, why not? She is just. Minus five. Well, not really good combat skill. Oh, but why not? Uh, yeah, we can propose it. And we will have non aggression pact. And here you can see pluses and minuses. You need at least one more plus to be able to send it. Decision, we can use our patron. No, we can't. We don't have enough piety. Well, we can unstop and fast in time. Okay. Low tribal organization was accepted. Yeah, and the events are starting. So, we're getting married. And we can collect royal aid. So, what do we want? Gold or prestige? I'm going for the prestige. And we have completed the ambition. So we can have a new one. Our combat skill is really terrible. And also we are Craven, which is even more terrible, especially for the tribal organization. And as it is in any strategy game, the start is pretty slow. So we just give the tasks to all our court members. Started some basic things to get more money. Oh, she's pregnant. That was pretty fast. Oh, she... And we are ill. Great. And... Not ill anymore. <laughs> Interesting. It's a little small, it's a little low. The terrible omens for pregnancy. We cannot stress her. Thankfully we have learning skill. 
So we don't have to do this bullshit. And we will not stress our wife. Oh, damn. She has bad omen anyway. Ah, uh, uh, dispatch mates, why not? And now, we can choose some actions to define our charter. Hunting or falconry? Let's go for it. Nice. Oh. Phew. Okay. Diligent, greedy, craven, and temperate. Well, that's pretty terrible. And we have a daughter. We can name her. And our ambition is done. Let's improve diplomacy. And someone... Oh, our diviner died. So what the bore? Huh. Ah, we have small army in our name. And the Swatabar leads army. So we have to forbid him from doing so. So he could attempt. To his duties. Okay, we have a falconer plus diplomacy and same trade. Why not? I just Uh, eight diplomacy. Oh, the um, uh, some pretty women wants to rape us. Uh, we should mind ourselves. And oh. Well, as I said, our spy master is no more. He wasn't really good. They catched him pretty fast. Well, let's lose another commander. Why not? And here are some interactions with your army. When you select an army, you can merge it to one big army or split in half, create a new unit. Or this band unit. This means you will throw them away. I don't recommend doing this in someone else's territory. 
because your soldiers are stupid and they won't find a way home. Oh, we are not unable to raid. Here are our commanders. Embark army means you will throw this army on a ship. If uh, you have a ship, for instance, here, and your army will be here. And we have no other army to attach to. Split off special troops. They all are special troops, so I can't do this. But I should disband them because they will loot my gold. And I don't need them currently. Uh, okay, we'll send the rose. I'm not sure if I'll get into war anytime soon. Ah, I can do it. Nice. If you're pagan, you can declare a subjugation against someone once in the lifetime. So, I can subjugate Misani. Four of ours. Nice. 1000 Levi's and I have 824. But he has no vassals. So. I hope they will accept my call. Otherwise, I'm done for. Also, if you right click on a charter, there are some interactions you can do. You can declare war, but only if it's uh, a ruler of the country. You cannot declare war on his vassals. Okay, for example, where is someone with vassals? Damn it, here. He must be independent. We cannot declare war on him. We can send him a gift. That's uh, usually some amount of wealth. Arrange marriage. Arrange with Rotel. The difference between marriage and betrothal is that betrothal is for non adult kids. take concubine or give concubine because we are pagans we can have three concubines assign guardian guardian oh we are guardian oh, nice wait ah oh, that's temporary skill boost no.
whatever. Guardian means that uh, you give your children someone who's taking care of it. Here, as a guardian, make sure you are giving it the right person. For example, if you want to give your children a high diplomacy, its guardian must also have a high diplomacy. If you want to have a warrior, give it to someone of your commanders. I want a spy. And that's basically everything. Oh. In the end, I will show you the war. Let's see if might accept. Are you kidding me? Ah, uh, damn. That idiot. He just declared a war on foreign country and cannot join our cause. Great. Also, because we are a tribal country, our Puzzles can pretty do whatever they please, so they can even declare war on foreign nations and foreign countries without our intervention. Let's see if they defeat us or not. We can see how the battle goes on. If we are defenders, we have some bonuses. This will be a really, really close call. Here you can see their morale and the number of soldiers. Nice, nice. They are broken, they are running away. Here we see that we are receiving 13 groups every month. We can wait and reinforce our troops or attack. As you saw, they are escaping until their morale is restored. 
and here we can assault but uh, they have almost 700 defenders and I have 1200 attackers which is not really much so I will not attempt an assault and rather wait ah more diplomacy Court level is just one because they are tribe two. And we can just wait until they die off. Rise of Shia. Of course, there are historical events. I'm not going to attack them through that river. Oh, our child wants something from us. Why not? Oh, so he went to Prague. Well, we will defeat him faster, I guess. Down here you see the war score. You can open the war. And we have 100. We basically already won and we can offer peace and enforce our demands. Because he's obviously not going to do it alone. Okay, offer peace and of course demand or you can also offer white peace, just stop fighting or surrender. Nice. Disband. The problem with winning wars and leaving the enemy vassals alive is that those vassals are yours and obviously they will hate you for defeating them. So I'll rather execute everyone than leaving them to become my vassals afterwards he's ill, he could die and I guess that's pretty everything I wanted to show you apart Ah, we can create a tile. These lower tiles are basically worthless because it's uh, doing nothing, but. Uh, Where is it? Here? Kingdom of Bohemia.
Kingdom of Bohemia, that's something else. Because it's a higher tier. We have High Chief Dome. And if we create King Dome, we will be kings. But we also need to subjugate Moravia. As we can see here, this is High Chief. And we are High Chiefs too. So, the problem is, if you manage to defeat another High Chief and submit him to your will and subjugate his country, This country will eventually fall off. When your charter dies. Because you cannot have two high chiefs in high chiefdom. That's impossible. You need a kingdom. Always a tier higher. So... I need a kingdom pretty fast. As you see, I need Moravia to be able to create kingdom. But this is High Chief 2. And I am just a High Chief. So, if I defeat Moravia, and subjugate it to my realm and my character dies it will instantly fall apart because the former high chief will take everything back he has no authority to another high chief Ah, welcome, Bishop. Tell us more of God. Yeah, sure. Goodbye. Oh, and we can execute our prisoner. Release him, ransom him. Execute him or uh, put him in a house arrest. That will be better for him or in oblit. That uh, will be much worse for him because it will take his. Uh, Health and Diplomacy. But... Uh, I will be... Good King and I will just execute him. Goodbye. Ah, Rising Threat. Great. Already Independent. I just defeated him and he wants independence. Great. Oh, we can already worship our patron deity. We will choose Uh, what skill do we need? It's uh, diplomacy. Where is diplomacy?
Damn. Oh, okay, so learning. Anyway, this is pretty everything I wanted you to know. Oh, yeah. The great model when we don't have money. Sorry. 20 gold, ha, huh, sure. No. We cannot build that monument. And I guess this will be all. I hope I helped you with something for the starting tutorial. If yes, and if it helped you some way, you can hit like. If not, you can hit dislike and write your opinion. Or what did I miss out? Or what did I say that was inaccurate or wrong? And next time here in Bohemian Kingdom, goodbye.